Honestly, it feels surreal, but we just got promoted to Champs League One, and I'm so excited to show you some of the awesome and amazing attacks. Yes, I know I say those words a lot, but the awesome and amazing attacks that our guys did in The Good Guys. So here we go. I'm still caught in a sense of unbelief that we actually made it to Champs 1. Welcome to the Clash Tips YouTube channel. I have so many attacks that I could show you guys because our clan did absolutely amazing, the CWL, but I had to pick a few. And if I had to pick a few, I wanted to show and highlight the attacks that we used the most and that we did the best at. One of those attacks, of course, was Super Bowlers. This is an attack by Shaw Day, but we had Ethan, we'd had Ruben, we had Battle Dad, so many guys that are getting very effective at Super Bowlers. And anytime you see a base where you can bring in the Flame Flinger, even if a mortar's on the outside like this, mortar's on the outside, super easy to tank for. And then this instance, Shaw just put down a Yeti and was able to easily tank for that Flame Flinger. But anytime you have a boxy base like this, where you can funnel out one side with the Flame Flinger, you can funnel out the other side with the Grand Warden, and then bring your Super Bowlers right down the middle, it will smash 99% of the time. I definitely think as more players pick this up, you're gonna see these type of bases just go down in use and go down in value because this so easily smashed by Super Bowlers. But Shade brings his Super Bowlers right down the middle, that Flame Flinger is still tearing up. I mean, completely tearing up. His Super Bowlers are completely tearing up, and the pathing is perfect for Super Bowlers. This was a really good read on Shaw's part, so excellent hit. Hits that Warden Tome right in the middle where there are likely to be lots of air traps, and you're not necessarily hitting the Tome for your Super Bowlers, although you want to keep your Super Bowlers alive. You don't want them to die because if they die, then yeah, you're, you're kind of stuck up a creek without a paddle. But you hit that Tome because of the healers. You want to make sure that the healers stay nice and healthy, stay nice and alive, don't stay nice and dead, so that way they can heal up your Super Bowlers, heal up your heroes make sure that everything stays nice and fresh so that way you can three star the base just like shaw did this is just one example of an amazing super bowler hit that we saw this cwl this next hit of course is trample damage on his dewdrop account and with this account with this exact attack style which is clone hydra he actually saw a plus 70 percent hit rate this was an amazing CWL for Trample. He did an amazing job, and he does it pretty much the same way every time. Starts by funneling with those sneakies, sending in his heroes to get some high value targets, but at the same time that he's getting those high value targets, he's also creating pathing, he's creating a funnel, and again, he does it the exact same way every single time. As soon as his heroes have carved out that pathing so that his dragons aren't gonna stray down to the south, he puts down his dragons, he puts down his loons, he puts down his dragon riders, then his grand warden, he waits just a little bit, and then he releases his blimp. One thing that Trample has been doing on the consistent is putting out a clone spell in front of his troops, so that way they clone a ton of those loons, and if those clone clones, if those clones, if those loans are cloned, if those clones are cloned, and if they stay out ahead of the dragons, then the defenses are not going to target the dragons or your dragon riders. They're going to focus one by one on those loons. And as you can see, those loons just stay out ahead of those dragons and dragon riders, completely tanking. And because there are so many loons out in front of those dragons and dragon riders, the dragons and dragon riders, I just said that three times in a row. They just completely tear up. If you look at the end of this attack, I don't think that he lost one single dragon or dragon rider. I mean, look at this. There are four dragons left, four dragon riders. I think he possibly started out with five dragons and four dragon riders. But anyway, this was one of Trample's most beautiful attacks. Great job, Trample. Absolutely amazing. This next attack is one that Curly used throughout CWL. Again, he used the same attack because he's very good at it. He does it often. And the one thing that I really like about it is he's not blizzarding the town hall. He sees value 
in his blizzard, number one, and being able to pull the CC. Number two, he's able to get one hero down, which is his queen. Number three, he's able to get some really high value targets with this blizzard. He not only gets the eagle, but he also is able to get the scatter shot at the exact same time. He did get a little lucky being able to get the queen. He would have been able to get the queen down anyway with his heroes. But once he goes through that first phase, this second phase, the patience on it is absolutely amazing. Curly, the patience on your attack, man. Absolutely beautiful. Starts with funneling for his queen, and he's just slowly waiting for his queen to work through those buildings, put down his king on the southern six o'clock end, puts in that ice golem to make sure that queen is not targeted, and he's going to funnel his queen directly into the town hall. Now, this is an attack that's not going to be something that you learn overnight. This is something that's going to take practice. This is something that's going to take months to develop. And I love it right here. He does a double super wall breaker entry. The reason is because he knows he's going to have to get through that archer tower. And then he's going to have to get through the next wall. And do again, that's just a small minor skill that he's developed by doing this attack over and over again. And, and he knows that if he does the double wall breaker entry, that that's going to work. I love how he does not burn a freeze on that single target Inferno. I would have burned a freeze afraid that that Inferno beam would have roasted my Archer Queen. But he waited, be and that's because of the professionalism, the, how good he is at this attack. Starts his Lalo at the 3 o'clock side, sends in his RC. The only thing that can really mess him up at this point, of course, is the back end RC or that multi-target inferno which is in the, the center of the base that his queen just took down and his rc would have taken down if his queen wouldn't have at this point the lalo pathing is super tight super perfect he's bringing in his back end loons typically two or three per defense he's hasting into the high damage areas he's right about to tome he has tons of spells left he has tons of freezes a haste and he's going to swag them all right here. I probably would not have swagged that many spells. I would have at least put them in. But he has so many loons left. He doesn't even have to worry about it. Curly had an amazing CWL. This was the attack that he used the most. He did a really great job of it. We have a few other guys who know how to use Blizzard Lalo just as well. But this was one of the attacks that helped us get to Champs 1. And I wanted to show it to you guys because of how awesome that it is. This next attack is one that Seaman uses almost every CWL, and that is Queen Charge Hybrid. He's really good at it. We've done a Queen Charge Hybrid that showcased Seaman and his abilities before. Starts out with the Flame Flinger, sends in that Hog to test for traps, gets a Skelly Trap that pops, has a Wizard that's ready, so that way those Skellies don't completely tear up his Flame Flinger, uses a Yeti to tank for that mortar again a mortar that's on the outside super easy what you really have to watch out for are those expos whenever you're using your flame flinger of course you don't want to ignore a mortar but an outside mortar is a lot easier to tank for a lot easier to take care of with a flame flinger than an expo especially an expo on ground starts his queen charge does beautiful pathing on his queen charge once that I forget what it is. Archer Tower goes down, sends in his wall breaker, so that way the wall breaker does not target that little square. Send in his queen to go after the town hall. And again, this is standard for Seaman for Town Hall 14 hybrid. Sends in his queen charge on the town hall to get lots of value to not only get the town hall, but to also draw out the CC so that way his super minions that comes out of the CC or whatever it might be are not going to bother with his hybrid. And at this point, he's starting to get in trouble. His queen hits the tornado trap, gets drawn into the poison. Rocket loons come out of the CC. Super minion power shots start to hit the CC. Or start to hit the queen, not the CC. <laughs> he hasn't released his CC yet. At least he hasn't come out of the flame flinger. Now at this point, I would be going crazy or, or I would be crying. I would be saying, oh crap, this is, this is at least go for the two star. But Seaman is such a professional at queen charge hybrid that not only does he do an amazing job with his hybrid, but he's still able to get the triple. Still able to get the three star. He starts in the funnel at six o'clock by sending in his king, and he does that perfectly because he wants to keep the, the funnel, he wants to keep the pathing for his hybrid as tight as possible because the wider that that 
funnel that that pathing goes for his hybrid, then the less likely that those troops are, are going to be able to benefit from the Warden's Tome, from the heals that he's going to bring. So in order to combat the fact that his queen went down early, he brings in his RC from that nine o'clock side. He has his queen, queen, his king coming in from that six o'clock side. He sends in the hybrid directly up the middle. And because of that, because he uses his tome effectively, because he uses his heal effectively, he's still able to get this attack down. And honestly, absolutely beautiful. I, I would have flubbed this attack. I would not have three-starred this. I, again, as I said, I would have freaked out, but he was able to triple, and this is just one example of the amazing job that Seaman was able to do to get us to Champs 1. This last attack is by my man, Congressman Colrick, using his Rage KJ21. I, I don't know why he put Rage. We talked about it on the podcast. He said something about that was his nickname in high school, but Rick had four triples this CWL. Only recently he was saying that it just doesn't feel like his attacks are going well. It doesn't feel like anything's clicking, like anything's working. Well, obviously, Rick, you found something that worked for you. And he used Clone Hydra for most of his attacks. But this attack was a little bit different. And I loved it because it was super interesting. One of the benefits of sending in your blimp directly over the top is on a lot of bases, base builders will put all the traps right there in the middle. And under that tome, that blimp is able to pick up all of those traps. So that way your drag Dragons and your dragon riders are able to go unharmed by the air traps. Once that blip goes down, a cloned super blimp comes out and he completely smashes the core. It was a great read on this base because he recognized that there was no area for giant bombs directly behind that town hall. There could have been the tornado trap, but the tornado trap, even if it was there, it would have pushed his super archers into the wall and it would not have really endangered them. So absolutely beautiful attack by my man, Rick. Great job this war, this CWL, good guys. I'm super proud of you. If you guys want to see more awesome videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment down below letting me know what types of attacks you would like to see.